now. So um, my husband and I bought our gym in 2010. So we just had our 10 year anniversary this month. So we haven't really gotten a chance to celebrate it yet because we're still sort of getting our um, bearings back after being shut down for the coronavirus. We opened our gym back up on June 1st. Um, so 2015, we bought the gym because my son um, was a competitive athlete at our gym. We're mostly a recreational gym, but we have a real small trampoline and tumbling program and a really small sports acrobatics team. Um, and he did both trampoline and tumbling and then switched to acro when he was in high school. So he always wanted to own the gym when the owner put it up for sale. He was 22 and couldn't afford it. My husband and I could, so we bought it. That first summer, we started out with, um, I think we had 380 students. Um, last July, we had um, 1,125. I keep statistics by the month because I like to look back and see you know, what we're doing compared to the previous same month. So like I said, we started out with 380 students in July. My highest number um, of students was this past February, um, just pre-COVID, um, we had 1,371 students. So we've grown a ton. And a lot of that growth I think is due to our Ninja program and some other decisions that I made around that same time. But so for those of you who don't know what a Ninja or a Warrior program is, it's um, it's a program that's, it's a combination of gymnastics and a little bit of the discipline from a martial arts program and sort of the, the flavor of parkour, um, but done in a really safe environment. And it's been really, really popular in the United States. I don't know exactly how many um, ninja programs there are the there's in the in the states there's three main programs that you can use um, or you can obviously start your own but I'm just not good at that I'm a big proponent of finding something that works and has you know a curriculum all set up and ready to go so we um, purchased the ninja zone program it's actually a licensed program we were one of the first 25 gyms in the states to get that program so a woman in indianapolis started it and she has i think six gyms so she brought it into all of her gyms and developed the program and then she had a couple of um, pilot gyms again in the indiana area which is the na a neighboring state to me and then she sent out an email and said hey i've got this really cool program is anybody interested in it um, we're interviewing to um, sell licenses to 25 other gyms. So we were one of the first 25 gyms. So we implemented, we bought the program in um, June of 2015. And that month we had 26 ninjas. And my number in February, which was the month right before we shut down for COVID, we had 371 ninjas. So we've really exploded and it's not only like it, it really helped the enrollment in the whole entire gym because it's a really popular program people search for it they, they search you out and so then we get you know their brothers and sisters in the program too so it it helped enrollment in the whole entire gym so um there's, like I said, in the States, there's three programs, and um, I believe that they're all available for purchase outside of the country. The Ninja Zone's the one I'm familiar with. It's a licensed program. There's a buy-in fee, um, and then there's a monthly fee. But just to give you an idea of revenue, um, 2015, like I said, we started in May, and our revenue that year was $25,000. And last year, my gross revenue was $225,000. So, um, you know, it's well worth it to even if you have to, even if you decide that, like me, that you didn't want to create something on your own, um, 
you know, even paying the licensing fee and the monthly fee, it's well worth it. So the other thing that you can do, of course, is develop your own program. And uh, sort of the thing with that is, you know, that I feel like the reason I wanted to buy a program that was already made is the curriculum is really progressive. And I'm not sure that I, you know, we would have been able to do something similar on our own and have it be as successful. So what you want to look for if you're going to purchase a program is that it has a progressive curriculum and that your kids are able to grow. So just like with your regular gymnastics, you know, you start out at a lower level and you're able to move up. Well, the same with Ninja Zone. So um, the Ninja program that we have is, it's sort of like karate programs. Um, it starts out, you start out as a white ninja and then you progress to yellow, green, blue, and purple. Um, in the States, because of insurance, um, most of the programs age out at a certain point and for our program it's 13. Um, I know that some of you had questions about what ages we, the program we started out with just, um, we started at six to I think 11, it was at the time. And then we progressed to six to 13. Um, it's for boys and girls. We don't have as many girls in the program, but um, that is a segment that's growing. Um, then we added um, four to four and five year olds. And now we actually have a preschool ninja program. So we start at 18 months. And just to give you an idea of numbers, um, in March, we had when we had 371 total in the program, a hundred and I think 109 of those were like what I would consider preschool ninjas, so up to um, age five. So that is um, like 28 or 29 percent of our program. So you know, I think that you would find if you added a program that whatever your ratios are between your, you know, preschool program and your school age program, you would find a lot of interest in that. And it also for us, before we started with the 18 month to the three year old program, we just had very, very few boys in the gym um, in our preschool program at all. And now parents have gone like they've gone crazy over the preschool component of our ninja program. So, I mean, it's definitely there's a market for it and definitely, you know, it's a way to grow your revenue in your gym. So, like I said, that first month we had 26 ninjas. We had um, 371 in our peak month, which was right before we shut down for COVID. So Kim, you know what, I sent you some slides yesterday and there's some pictures, if, if you maybe, do you have that available? Oh, yeah. that, can we like screen share that so people sure. can kind of see, especially for those that don't know what a Ninja program is? Absolutely, I wasn't sure if you were going to share your screen. I, let me pull no, it up. No, I'm just like technologically <laughs> not advanced, so I don't it's know. Okay. <laughs> old no people one second here okay all right can you see that yep okay On page one. Oh, so on that screen, those are the other programs that are available in the States. Um, Ninja Zone is the one I use, and then there's Go Ninja, and there's um, Ninja Monkeys. That's just okay. my growth chart, and you can see where we dropped off there. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's been, you know, a straight up sort of trajectory. And the dips are my summers. Yep. And so 
Yeah, so we started, like I said, we started with um, 6 to 11, went to 6 to 13. Then we added um, sort of like kindergarten age, like four and five year olds. And then I think about two years ago, we added the 18 months to three year olds. So there's there's a market for sure. Okay, so these are some pictures of the space that we have. And um, so the one picture that's on the left, they are practicing kicks and um, it, you can also sort of get a feel for um, what kind of equipment we have. Like that red thing in the back is, um, it's like a trapezoid that is used as a warped wall. And um, we do now, as you can see in the one picture, we have a rig that um, we purchased, I think it'll be three years ago in November. And the kids really like that. It's not necessary at all um, to start the, a program. You can use whatever, really, whatever equipment you have in your gym already. So um, parallel bars, um, uneven parallel bars, you can use your vault system, you can use any of your mats. Um, all of that stuff is really usable in a Ninja program. In my gym, um, we didn't have any of that equipment because we're mainly a recreational tumbling program. So we have a lot of trampolines and we have a lot of mats, but we didn't have any bars and beams. So I just went out and found used equipment um, and brought that into the gym. So we were able to implement it. Really, I think initially I spent, um, I would say less than probably, thousand dollars on equipment just because we didn't have any but if you are you know what people typically think of as a gymnastics gym with bars and beams and stuff you're going to have all of the stuff that you have okay so somebody's asking me how much space we use for the ninja program so there's really there's two ways that you can do it um we have a separate space and our space is it's 75 feet long it's the width of our building and then it's um three and a half carpet bonded foam strips wide so 21 feet i think and we always in that space we always have two classes going on um and now we a lot of times we have three classes going on at the same time but we rotate the if we have three classes in an hour we rotate those classes down into the other areas of our gym which our gym is fifteen thousand square feet and we have um like section it's sort of sectioned off so like this class is going to use a specific space during whatever time frame it is. Um, and so Ninja just goes into that rotation. And we really didn't even start doing that until the last year. They were self-contained into this space just because it worked for us. Um, but there are tons of gyms. I would say that I am probably in the vast minority to have a separate ninja area i think most places integrate it however you integrate the rest of your classes into your space into your normal rotation so you know you might have a 15 minute rotation on bars and you might have a 15 minute rotation in tumbling and um you're, you're going to need access to walls because they do backflips and stuff off of walls so just however you normally would integrate anything else into your gym you can do that and i would say probably 90 percent of the people that i know that have ninja programs it just goes in their gym just you know you just find space to do it for us because we're mostly just a tumbling gym um and because we found that when we started the program, 
we weren't used to having boys in our gym really. Like I think before we started, we had like maybe 10 boys in the gym and I just, I hate to even say this, but they were just more easily distracted than the girls. And so they would see like our acro team practicing and they would get like, like all caught up in that. And so it was just easier for us. And we had this space that wasn't being utilized really. So we just made it into a ninja area. So, but whatever works for you guys, you can integrate it however works for you guys. So, all right. So, um, yeah, so staffing and class considerations, how to find staff. So um, staffing is super important. Um, and just like finding gymnastics coaches, it's hard. <laughs> Um, so we rely a lot on friends of staff. Um, we have some parents that coach it, um, you know, maybe just one night a week. Uh, the thing that we found that works best for us is we, there's a, um, uh, there's a, a company that does like online sort of recruiting it's called indeed here and um we generally always have an ad there because we always are looking for staff um so we try not to be real when when we look for staff in general we're not really looking for you know super gymnasts we're looking for personality um so they you know have fun with kids and that they're excited about teaching kids. That's sort of what we look for because we figure we can train them to, to do you know, what we need them to do gymnastics wise. So um, we started out basically with one guy who taught all of our ninja classes um, and he, he, his hours went up as the program grew. And so initially when you start a program they're all going to be you know beginner ninjas whatever it is you're going to call them and so then what we did is to add new classes to the schedule because it's progressive and they move from level to level to level so sometimes we were lucky enough where all of the kids progressed at the same rate and we could just change that class to the next level um so we did that some um then as we grew and we wanted to add another coach to the program we would add a one level and then add the next upper level at the same time so parents had options to move their kids into and then we got to the point about a year ago where um we had wait lists that were just crazy and like people were on the wait list for like a year before they could get into the program. So we just had, we just decided we're just going to add another class at every hour, which put us on a lot of days having three classes per hour. Um, and so when we did that, what we did was um, we kind of wanted to make our program so it wasn't super dependent upon whoever was teaching a particular class. So then we started, like we'll have, like maybe on Monday at 5.30, we might have three ninja classes going at the same time and they're all different levels. So I, we have, we'll have like a white, a yellow and a green. So we assign three, class, three staff to all of those classes so this week you might have Josh, but next week you're going to have Courtney and the next week you're going to have Seth. So that way the kids in the program are getting used to three different coaches and the parents are not thinking that, well, you know, if my kid doesn't have, you know, the superstar coach, which in your gym, there's always that superstar coach that everybody wants, you know, they, they're used to a whole bunch of different coaches. So if then you have coaches that quit, which you're going to do, then your program is not gonna collapse. And that also was another really big consideration for me when 
we decided to go with a program that was something that we were going to pay for and not develop in-house, I didn't want the class to be dependent upon that person. And if that person leaves, then the whole thing falls apart because, you know, nobody really knows how to do that. Okay, so somebody's asking, do you have a coach training program or is that included in the program fee? So the program that I use, Ninja Zone, um, I just really can't say enough great things about it. Um, yeah, the training is included in the program. I think we have, we pay a really small um, sort of like, you know, we have USA Gymnastics in the States and you guys have British Gymnastics, I think. So you know how you have to pay, probably your gym pays a fee and then your coaches pay a fee. So that's how my Ninja program works. And it's, the coaching fee is, it's really minimal. Um, and then they have access to all of the videos. There's like so many videos for training. Um, there's a monthly webinar for like gym owners and program directors. Every quarter they do like round tables with coaches. Um, and there's a monthly webinar for just coaches that I'm not involved with. Yeah, and Ninja Zone is available in the UK. It's worldwide. There's um, locations in the States, in the UK, um, Australia, I don't know where else, but they're in, I don't know, seven, New Zealand, um, South Africa, like seven or eight or nine different countries. Um, so now I, I shouldn't have answered that question because I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Oh, but yeah, so the um, coaching. So, and they not only, um, like the stuff that I've learned with Ninja Zone has been applicable to all of our programs all the way across the gym. Like they just made me think about how I run my business a lot more than I did before. Um, and I think that they've made us better in a lot of different ways. So yeah, you know, you can be as proactive as you want for those kinds of things. Um, literally, there's probably something once a week that, you know, like a Zoom meeting or a webinar or something that I can catch. And there's two really active Facebook pages, um, one that's geared more for um, owners and directors of the program, and then one that is just for coaches. And so they talk about stuff and the whole community is really supportive um, as far as you know, helping people out and, and all of that kind of stuff. And they even have in the fall, um, they have a NinjaCon, which is, you know, like whatever kind of Congress that like, or a conference or whatever that British gymnastics might do for you guys, they have that. Uh, but there's a lot, a lot of stuff online and it's a big community and it's really supportive and people are really, really, really willing to help. Okay, so, um, all right. So if you wanna go to the next slide. So I already talked about, um, what kind of revenue just for tuition. Um, but I wanted to touch base a little bit about um, pricing your program. So you would need to check with your insurance um, before you add a program if you're going to do something on your own because, and that was the other reason why um, I went with a program that was established and had um, a progressive curriculum because insurance companies, if you tell them that you're in the States anyway, that you're going to have a parkour program, they won't insure you. Um, so to me, it just made sense to go with somebody that had already worked with the insurance companies and that I was going to be able to get insurance for my program. Um, so along with that, the insurance companies in the States said that you couldn't have more than six kids in a class. So therefore you want to charge more for the program because whatever your ratios are, I'm assuming they're higher than six to one. Um, you know, you're, 
you want to, it's a premium sort of a class. So you want to charge more for it. Um, but in addition to that, um, there's other revenue streams. So um, in the program that I chose and in my gym, I require that they wear the ninja uniform, which is just a t-shirt and a headband. Um, so I'm making money in my pro shop because I require the uniforms. And then in addition to that, we have ninja birthday parties that which really is just a regular birthday party, except for I ordered ninja plates and we teach them some ninja skills and they get to play upstairs on the rig, which normally we don't do in a birthday party. So I charge more for those parties and like quite a bit more. And then we do also um, camps in the summer, ninja camps, and those always those days always sell out way before the other days do. And then we also twice a year in house we do um, a competition. So it's like a gymnastics meet for ninjas. Um, somebody is the master of ceremonies for it and we used to rent the lights that like pulsate to music and we play like really loud techno music and um we set up a great big obstacle course on our floor and it's by level and they we have judges that are just coaches in the gym that you know are familiar enough with the program that they can judge and so we do that twice a year and we charge extra for that. Um, and so we make money that way too. So that these things were not included in that, the revenue figures that I gave you before, the revenue figures that I gave you before were just straight up tuition, but all of this stuff is extra. And um, I mean, in my gym, we price stuff so we make money on everything we do so you know i'm making money on all of these things as well so there's there's a lot of revenue that you can capture that you're not currently capturing by adding any really new program to the gym so um the other thing we recently added a aerial silks program to our gym and we're the only gym around that has that too so um I'm always looking for other things to do in the gym that, you know, to use the exi existing space we have better. So Kim, if you wanna to go to the next slide, it shows you. So this is, um, these are just some pictures of us when we do the competition. So um, the shirt that they wear for this is different than the shirt that they normally wear. So that was an, you know, and they're required to have it to, participate in the competition. So that would be like, you know, selling a special Leo for a gymnastics meet or something like that. So, um, and then that little boy on the right, he's going through the obstacle course. So, all right. And then I think the next slide is my last one other than questions. Yeah. So, um, because of insurance in the States anyway, at some point your kids are going to age out. Um, so there's a leadership program in the program that I bought, which is Ninja Zone. Um, so there's a leader in training program. And so we implemented this about two years ago. And so it's a way for kids to still be in the gym. Um, and they, they sort of mentor other ninjas. So right now, all of the kids that are in our leader in training program are still active in the program. None of them have aged out yet um but they get a special shirt to wear and generally what we do is they help with the class that's either before or after their ninja class so they help out in class um just with like you know taking turns and they, they're not doing any spotting or anything like that but they really like it's like a big huge deal to be asked to be in the leader in training program and long term it's going to help us develop staff in house so you know when they become of you know age when they can 
get a work permit and then start working in the gym, you know, we maybe have them come in for a couple classes a night or whatever and pay them, you know, minimum wage. And so it'll be a way for us to develop staff in house. So that is part of the program. Um, and again, in the program that I have, it like it lays all of this out for you um, as far as like even the letter to send to parents and to the student when you're asking them to be in the program. It's it's a really, the program I have is really awesome. And not to say that the other programs aren't awesome, I just don't know about them as much, but um, it was the first one and it's it's just really fleshed out and developed really well. So that is it for my presentation, unless you guys have any questions. Kim, I can't see, okay. Okay. Yeah, so I will give you, if anybody is interested, um, you know, I don't want this to become a Ninja Zone commercial because we're not affiliated yeah. with them. <laughs> But I will say that I actually did use Ninja Zone when I started out in my gym as well. And so I have a little bit of a different perspective being a, from a small gym owner's point of view. Um, so the other programs I think that are out there, nin, what was it, Ninja Monkey? And yeah, Ninja. there's Go Ninja and Ninja Monkeys were the, gotcha. the ones that I'm familiar with. So when I was running a ninja program and doing some shopping around, it seemed like Go Ninja was more of an a la carte service. So you were able to purchase actual plans with a one-time fee instead of having the monthly um, installments that were due. But in return, you know, you were missing the staff training piece of it and you were missing the monthly webinars. And so I think that you just really have to do your research if this is something you're interested in and figure out number one what you can even afford to invest or if you want to start out just creating your own program uh, based off of your research maybe you have some education majors or some people that would be helpful in-house to help you design your own starter curriculum and then later invest in a an upgraded program that's always an option too um, but every, you know, all of these programs do have a cost associated with them. So you want to make sure that you really do your homework and figure out what you can afford to invest too. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, you know, if you, if you're wanting to do something in house, then I would suggest that you maybe start with staff that you have that might be interested in doing something. And if you have a men's program, um, you know, I think that that would be a great place to start or hang out at whatever the locations are in your town that like offer CrossFit training or go to a local park where you're going to see like, you know, older teenagers, young adults doing parkour or urban running. Um, and you might talk to some of those people and see um, you know, what they might be, how they might be interested in helping you out. Um, just, you know, check with your insurance company, though, to make sure that whatever you're doing, that they're going to be able to insure you. Because in the States, I mean, we're just sort of a really litigious society. And so, you know, people sue at the drop of the hat here. So, that was like a huge consideration for us, but where you're at, it may not be that way. And it would be then a lot easier to start your own program, you know, in-house. But just, you know, make sure that you document everything because you don't want to be, you know, just like any other program in your gym, you don't want to be dependent upon that person. And if they leave, then the whole thing collapses. And then you have, you know, kids who are wanting to do it and they, you don't have any staff available to do it anymore. Absolutely. So what questions do you guys have? We have Diane here. She's also the, the superstar who's had a pretty awesome uh, recovery story. So we can also pick her brain about recovering <laughs> from COVID here. 
Okay, so somebody's asking about aerial. Um, so I said aerial art. So um, like what you would see in like a Cirque de Soleil program where they climb up the silks, yes. Um, so we also, I wanted to do that. And again, because of insurance, I found a program that was sort of turnkey. Um, the thing that's really nice about an aerial silks program is that those people are so loyal to aerial silks because it's so cool. Um, we virtually are at the same numbers post COVID as we were pre COVID. Like they all came back and we're, that program is actually growing. The other programs in my gym, they're not floundering by any means. We're like, from this July to last July, we're like at 89% of our enrollment. So, I mean, I'm thrilled with that, but our aerial silks program, they're like at 100% of last, last July. So it's, it's kind of crazy. So um, for that program, again, I went out and purchased um, a turnkey program that's progressive and, um, the, per, the program that I purchased for that, she actually trains my staff. So she initially, when we bought it, um, we're three years into it. So we got that one in 2017, also in May. Um, she came out and installed the equipment and she trained my staff, but now new staff, she trains um, virtually over I think she uses FaceTime with them or something like they submit videos to her and then she approves them to teach, you know, whatever level they're going to teach. So um, we have five rigs in the gym and um, post COVID, it's been a little bit of a challenge because everything has to be cleaned after every rotation. So we only have, generally we have, um, four silks up and then one other piece of equipment like a trapeze or the hoop it's called the lira in aerial arts um so we have to wash the silks after every rotation so we only have one silk up we bought another trapeze and another lira so they rotate equipment by week instead of during the class um and then also with aerial arts we do um like a showcase like a recital twice a year you know, parents come in and the, we choose a theme for each one um, and they can, they wear costumes and they perform to, you know, music that they've picked out. So that's, that program is a lot more expensive than Ninja because of the rigging that's involved. You have to make sure that, um, you know, your beams and stuff are going to hold it. So my aerial arts program, it's through, um, it's called Dragonfly. Um, Mistia Fallon, M-I-S-T-I-A-F-A-L-L-O-N is the woman. And she, she and her husband met on, I think on a cruise ship, actually. They were both um, performers on a cruise ship. And so she's, you know, very, very, very big into safety, which you would want to be, you know, when you've got students hanging from the air. So, yeah. So that was the other program that we added in 2007. And it's not huge. Um, we had, I don't, I think we have about 80 students in it, but I mean, we charge more for that too, because of the equipment and because the class size and stuff like that. So, um, and then we also pay a monthly fee to her too, which is really similar to what we pay for our ninja program. So I do all kinds of like different, I do a lot of different things that other gyms around us don't do. Like we don't have a woman's or a men's program at all. We're strictly tumbling, ninja, aerial arts. And like I said, we have a really small trampoline and tumbling team and we have a really small acro team. And then we do some, um, we do a little bit of adaptive gymnastics for special needs kids. We have two of those classes on the schedule that we offer for free. So. Good stuff. 
Yeah, anything else while we have Diane on the line? This has been super, super helpful. Thank you. Oh gosh, you're welcome. It Helps was my it. pleasure to be with you guys today. Yeah, I know I've had some conversations with gym owners about Ninja before, but I think it helps to put it in perspective when you can see mm -hmm. someone that's been successful with it. So, yeah, and you know, I think that, you know, whatever, if you're interested in a Ninja program, I mean, I don't think you can go wrong with any of the programs. Um, when I was looking, when I was looking to add something, there was only Ninja Zone around. All of the other programs happened after Ninja Zone. So it's, you know, it was the only one available in 2015. There was nothing else. So, um, you know, the other programs, I, I, you know, I feel like, you know, they wouldn't be in business if they weren't good. And um, there's a lot of people that use them. Okay, so um, is your pricing for ninja classes the same as my general gym and recreational? So, um, no, it's a little bit more. It needs to be more than a little bit more. But when I started it, um, it, one of the rules was that it needed to be priced the same as gymnastics. And so I took that literally and made it the exact same as gymnastics. And what I should have done was looked at, you know, like my per pupil costs for a class that had eight kids in it versus a class that had six kids in it. And I don't know why I didn't do that because I'm usually a numbers girl, but for some reason that escaped me. So um, now I'm trying to get it. So, um, you know, it makes sense. And because, my program is so fully fleshed out and it's so developed. And even though we just added last year, like a third class on a lot of the different hours, I still have wait lists for Ninja. So I know that I could, you know, I'm, and I am, have been raising the prices. So to, to sort of match that. Um, what is your participant size of your Ninja program? So um, as, like what percentage of it of my total is I think is maybe what you're asking. Let me see. So it's um, right around 30% of my total enrollment. Um, it could be more, but I just don't have room. Um, it's really, you know, dependent upon room at my spot. And I think that answered all of the questions. Yep. And then, like I said before, of my ninja program, about 28 or 29 percent is like what I would call preschool ninja. So that it's a huge market for little for preschool ninjas. Um, and we make them wear a shirt too. <laughs> Um, so, you know, you also have that revenue as well. Okay, so my coach to participant ratio for the Ninja program, and this, that is mandated by Ninja Zone, um, is six to one. Um, so in that one picture that I showed you, I was counting, I'm like, oh, there's like eight people in that, <laughs> there was eight people in that photo. So, um, I, I feel like there was another coach who's out of picture because, um, Josh may have been doing something with eight of them. And then there was, you know, other kids in the background. So um, yeah, six to one. And my normal ratio um, is eight to one. And I, we, like, I, we've been open since June 1st, and I did not change that ratio. Um, because in my state, we didn't have to, and I didn't want to. So we're eight to one for everything else. And we're six to one in Ninja. And also aerial arts were six to one. My regular preschool program is six to one as well. Um, has there been any particular branding selling points to promote Ninja? Has no one always that included in your affiliation have your struggle to promote free GS, even though they are so similar? Okay, so um, we did like to to promote it, I think, is that what you're asking? Um, 
we did initially a lot of advertising on Facebook. And then after that, we just sort of grew by word of mouth. Um, and people here search for it. And I don't know why, but in my area, and I we live in a, a metropolitan area that's probably around 300,000 people. And I don't know how many gyms there are, but I mean, there's one that like is within spitting distance from me practically. Um, so in my little area, I mean, I know of like six or seven gymnastics gyms and just that are like, you know, maybe within, you know, 10 miles or whatever. Um, I'm the only one that has a ninja program, which I don't know why, because um, it's it's a big revenue stream. So yeah, I don't know why. Um, but ninja, the the program that I use, there is a ton of marketing in for available. There's all kinds of stuff. There's Instagram stuff. There's um, Facebook stuff. There's videos and you have access to all of that and you can put it wherever you want. So. Diane, there's a question that says our preschool is aged three and four years. Yours is older, right? Um, our preschool program, we actually start at six weeks. Um, we have a six weeks to walking class. That's 30 minutes a week. And that one is free. Um, and I just do it for free because I think that, you know, once they come in the gym and they get used to coming to a class, then I can charge them after that. And then the next class is walking to 24 months. And then 24 months is when we start, two years is when we start preschool, like our normal preschool classes. And it goes up to kindergarten here um generally you go to kindergarten at five or six so it sort of varies by kid so yeah i think a lot of people forget about the baby market and i think it can can sound a little silly if you don't know a lot of people that are doing it but it's actually a really great lead generator and the thing about baby parents or toddler parents that are younger than three is that a lot of those are first time moms or, you know, they have other toddlers and there aren't many options around for social opportunities for stressed out moms. So don't forget about that because those baby classes might be the only time they get out of the house in the daytime Yeah, that week. And that is really important. And then they start to positively associate your gym with so many things in their life. And it's, it's a great lead generator. Yeah, it really is. Um, I mean, I would say, I mean, some of the people that come to the free baby class, that's 30 minutes a week, you know, they, I would say 50% of them drop because, you know, I think they're stressed financially, financially with a newborn anyway, but the other 50%, they enroll, um, you know, as soon as they can. And, Pre uh, preschoolers at my gym, um, we drop down a lot in the summertime, but around October, then we, you know, our program is pretty filled. So, and I, I think that the baby program helps that. And, and again, you know, check it, what, check around and see what other gyms in your area are doing. If they're not doing it and you think it's a good idea, I think you should try it because, <sighs> Like I said, I mean, we do really weird stuff in our gym that nobody else does. And so, and people are looking for that stuff. They're looking for, you know, a parkour, you know, free running kind of ninja program. They're looking for aerial arts is becoming really, really big. It was always sort of big ish on like the East Coast, like, you know, New York and California here. And I'm in, the middle part of the country and it's you know getting a lot more popular and people are looking for it um and the same with baby stuff like parents they're looking for you know things unique things to do with their kids and 
you know, they want to give them the best opportunities they can in life. And I mean, if you can provide that and you can, um, you know, that, that baby program and our um, walking to two year old program, all we did was I bought a couple of books about things to do with babies. <laughs> and we bought a bunch of, you know, like mirrored toys and um, like a lot of textile stuff that, you know, balls that have different textures to them and those playmates, play mats that have like water in them and, you know, stuff like that. Like that was a super inexpensive program to start and it feeds into our preschool program. Yeah. And don't forget about the, the rolling benchmarks. Yes. If you can do anything on towels and, you know, and you work on the milestones yeah. that parents are concerned with, you know, rolling and sitting in that, in that. Yeah. And tummy time, you know, like yeah. having a mirror of the baby and stuff like that so um so somebody said preschool and i wanted to know your youngest age group i already do gym classes for 18 months plus that's great that you do that um we didn't have any 18 month olds in our gym um really other than the, the really small baby program but yeah so our um our ninja program starts at 18 months and coaches for that you don't have to know anything about um, you know, really gymnastics. It's if, you know, whoever you hire for preschool classes in your area, they make great ninja, baby ninja and little ninja coaches because they, you know, already get that whole, you know, you have to be really enthusiastic and you have to, you know, be able to grab their attention and all of those things. So whoever you co whoever are your coaches for preschool, if they're looking for more hours, then, they will love to pick up those hours for the ninja ninja classes too. So. Absolutely. Good stuff. Yeah, and, and don't forget too the, the power of repackaging. You know, you're clearly not teaching an 18 month old how to do a, a ninja kick or a karate chop, obviously, <laughs> but you know, a lot of these are basic gross motor skills, but you might be reaching a market that you hadn't reached before when you call it something else and have a cute t-shirt on. You would mm -hmm. be very, or a onesie, we did onesies in our gym, but you would be super surprised the amount of new faces that you pull in when you market a class differently, call it something else, relabel it, uh, provide a theme for it. And that's really what it's about, I think, for preschool ninja. Yeah, and we have, um my son and his wife have a two and a half month, two and a half year old. And so, you know, he's been coming to the gym since he was six weeks old. And like, it's pretty crazy, the stuff that he can do. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, he can do a seat drop on a bat on a trampoline. And I mean, he gets really good air on a trampoline and knows what he's doing. Like he knows, you know, that you you know, how to stop himself. And he knows that he needs to jump, you know, with two feet at a time instead of, you know, like this. I mean, it, it's really crazy, you know, how much they learn. For sure. Well, thank you so much, Diane. Uh, if anybody has any follow-up questions for her, I'm going to pop you in the group today and tag okay. you. So feel free to sure. post some questions in there and Yep. You will, if it's okay with you, I'll post the PDFs that you gave us today. Oh yeah, for sure. Awesome, okay. Well, any more questions, guys? You are so welcome, Anna and Carly. Thank you, thanks yeah. for having me today, guys. I appreciate it. Okay, I will, evening. thank you, Diane. I will make sure to post this lecture in the Facebook group, the Love Gymnastics Facebook group. So if you're not in there, please add yourself, Love Gymnastics community. And remember, we are off next week, but we will be back Wednesday, July 22nd with the next webinar for you. So stay tuned. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. I did give myself oh, a you got last week. I didn't <laughs> so cute. Yeah. My son said I look like Katy Perry, and then my daughter said I look like Justin Bieber, so the jury's still <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. Oh, that's funny. 
All right, guys. We will see you all soon. Thanks so much. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye.